All right, and we're uh, back here for another universal gravitation question, grade 12 physics. It reads, International Space Station, where they currently, at the time of this recording, Commander Hadfield, Canadians, in charge up there, doing pretty good, sending some great pictures down. Hey, a little plug for you. Uh, it orbits at an altitude of approximately 226 kilometers. What is the orbital speed and period? Okay, so one thing to be very careful with here is the altitude is 226 kilometers above the Earth's surface when we do all these calculations. Uh, with universal gravitation, we need to be from the, the distance to the center of mass of the object that we're orbiting. Now, the only difference, you know, the only case is where we don't worry about that is if the distances are very, very large. So the Earth and the Moon is a much larger distance than the diameter of each of these objects, and it doesn't matter. But 226 kilometers up above the Earth isn't a huge difference compared to the size of the Earth, so we're going to have to, to incorporate distance from the center of the Earth. Uh, what is its orbital speed and period? So rather than just kind of pull a couple equations out of my butt, I'm going to work out how I get them. I figured I might as well take, a, take time to review this for you anyway. So in order for an object to stay in orbit around something, it needs a minimum force. That minimum force is the centripetal force. So the centripetal force is the mass of the object, velocity of the object squared over r, the distance from the, uh, the center of the orbit, which in this case is the center of the Earth. Well, in order that force is applied by gravity. So the gravitational force is universal gravitational constant, mass of the object. In this case, mass of the Earth divided by the distance from the center of the Earth squared. So the gravitational force is providing the tug to keep this thing in orbit as it's going around at a very specific velocity. So the centripetal force and the gravitational force are equivalent to each other. So we set those two equations equal. mv squared over r equals g m times the mass of the Earth. So lowercase m would be the mass of the International Space Station over r squared. So you probably notice that the question doesn't give you what the mass of the space station is. And then, as you can see, I hope you can see, it doesn't matter. There's an m on both sides of the equal sign. We divide them out. They divide out. And we can also simplify things a little bit by dividing out one of the r's. So if you want, multiply both sides by r. The one on the right becomes r to the power of 1, and the one on the left just divides out altogether. So we're left with a relationship for velocity squared. So I'm just going to write that down kind of out of the way. Universal gravitational constant, mass of the Earth, divided by the radius. Remember, that's not the radius of the Earth. That's the distance. That's the orbital radius. That's the distance from the center of the Earth to the International Space Station. So be very careful what value you put in for R. And that equals velocity squared. So right there is a relationship where we can do one of these questions. What is the orbital speed? Well, that we can get right now. We, we know the altitude above the center of the Earth. We can look up in our notes what the radius of the Earth is and pretty easily calculate what the velocity is. So I'm just going to kind of write over here that the velocity then is the square root of all that. Remember that R is not the radius of the Earth. It is the orbital radius and we have to take into account distance from the Earth. So I may as well do that calculation right now. G 6.672 times 10 to the negative 11. Universal gravitational constant, mass of the Earth, 5.98 times 10 to the 24. And yeah, that's kilograms. So make sure your units are all meters, kilograms, seconds. And on the bottom, orbital radius is the Radius of the Earth, which is 6.3, oh, where am I here? 6.378 times 10 to the 6 meters, plus the orb, the altitude, 226,000 meters. So if you're going to make a mistake, it's probably right there. Radius of the Earth in kilometers is 6,378. We have to have meters for this to work out and equate to uh, using the gravitational constant that is it, as it's written. Remember, the units for gravitational constant is like newtons, meters squared over kilograms squared, so we have to have meters. 
So there's the altitude on the right and the bottom, 226 kilometers, which is 226,000 meters, and then how far we are above the center of the Earth. That equals big square root sign B. All right, careful calculations. We'll do it in a couple of steps here. 6.672 exponent negative 11 times 5.98 times 124. On the top, we have 3.989 times 10 to the 14. On the bottom, that's 6.378 exponent 6 plus 226000 6, 6, 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6.604 times 10 to the 6, but same kind of thing. Square root, don't forget. Ultimately, it's velocity. All right, so let's divide 3.989 exponent 14 divided by that. So 3.989 exponent 14 divided by 6, 6, 0, 4, 0, 0. So in the square root sign, you should get about 60,000. Sorry, 60 million, 312, approximately. Square root that. 7,766. So we'll just round that to 7,800 meters every second. And that's about why it only takes an hour and a half for the International Space Station to go all the way around the Earth once. So, starting with our relationship for centripetal force, gravitational force, equate them, get a fairly simple looking formula for velocity, for orbital velocity. The kind of difficulty comes in putting your numbers in, being careful with your exponents, be careful with what your radius is, hitting the square root button, and ultimately getting with 7,800 meters per second. I'm going to take that equation again now and finish this problem, see what the period is. So it's G M E over R equals V squared. Well, V is 2 pi R over T. The second part of this problem asks us to figure out what the period is. Well, I don't even have to do anything crazy with this one. I have my orbital velocity, 7,800 meters per second. I have my orbital radius, calculated from the problem above. I can figure out what the period is. So I'm going to rearrange my definition of uh, circular velocity, solve it for period. So period is going to equal 2 pi r over v. And that'll give me my period in seconds. And then I'll convert that to minutes if the question asks me to do that. So it's 2 pi times, going back up here, 6, 6, 0, 4, 0, 0, 0, 6, 6, 0, 4, 0, 0, 0. Velocity, 7,800. So the period in this thing is 2 times pi times 6, 6, 4, 0, 0, 0, divided by 7,800. I should get... 5,320 seconds. So dividing that by 60, just to kind of give you an idea how long that is. 5,320 divided by 60 is about a period of 89 minutes, which is, as I said before, it takes about 90 minutes, an hour and a half, for the International Space Station to orbit the Earth once. So if you're looking up and you see it, it's not going to be in the sky for long. 